Hello everyone, in this video let's study about the properties of impulse response representation of the LTI system. You know that LTI system, it has the impulse response H of T and if you give the input X of T, your output will be X of T convolution of H of T. Okay, so we have already studied about the convolution integral that is y of t is equal to integral that is from minus infinity to infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau d tau. Okay, so this is the impulse response of the LTI system. Impulse response means whenever you are going to give the impulse input and you are going to cons uh, you are going to take the output, that output will be the impulse response. So whenever you are giving the input delta t, the output will be h of t. Okay, so that will be your impulse response of the system. So uh, this will be satisfying many properties and that will be studying about the commutative property, distributive property and the associative property. So first, if I consider the commutative property, uh, so you already know about the commutative that is a into b is equal to b into a, right? a plus b is equal to b plus a. So that is what commutative property. Here we can say that x of t convolution of uh, h of t that is equal to h of t convolution of x of t. So now let us take uh, 1 that is x of t convolution of h of t then we will be deriving h of t convolution of x of t from that. Okay, so you know the integral that is y of t this is a convolution integral minus infinity to infinity x of tau into h of t minus tau d tau. This is for x of t convolution of h of t. Now what I will do is I will replace this t minus tau by a variable m. Okay, so t minus tau is equal to m. So now I want I want to replace this d tau by dm. So what I can write minus d tau is equal to dm. So if tau is equal to minus infinity, minus of minus infinity it becomes infinity. So when tau is equal to minus infinity, m will be equal to infinity. When tau is equal to infinity, m will be equal to minus infinity. So here, this limits of this integration will change in this particular case. So that becomes infinity to minus infinity. Next comes x of tau is nothing but it is t minus m. So t minus m into h of m into minus dm because d tau is equal to minus dm. So we know that integration a to b if i change the order of the integration we will be getting the minus sign outside so here also what i will do is i will change the limit of this integration see from infinity to minus infinity i will bring it to this from minus infinity to infinity i took out the minus now so this is x of t minus m into h of m minus is here so again into minus and dm so minus into minus it becomes plus so you are going to get minus infinity to infinity x of t minus m into h of m dm so now i will change the order of the integration so here i'll write h of m i'll write x of t minus m into dm and here it is minus infinity to infinity so is this is it not of the form h of t convolution of x of t Okay, suppose I will take h of t convolution of x of t, I will write it in terms of tau. So, you can just replace this tau by m and you can verify it. h of tau, x of t minus tau, d tau. So, now if I replace this tau by m, I will be getting t minus m and this one will be dm. So, is it not equal? So, this will be equal to h of t convolution of x of t. So, now we started with x of t convolution of h of t and we arrived at this result h of t convolution of x of t. So, we saw that the convolution it satisfies the commutative property in the continuous time domain. So, next if I take distributive property, what does this distributive property says? So, it says, see a into b plus c that is equal to a into b plus a into c, right? So, similarly, I can write it in the form of convolution h1 of t plus h2 of t. So, that will be giving you x of t convolution of h1 of t plus x of t convolution of h2 of t. So, if I uh, write it in terms of block diagram, I can say that input is common to this because I am going to give it to the adder. So, this is h1 of t 
and here we have H2 of T. So, the same input is given to both, okay. And here I am taking it to the summer where it is going to be added and this will be giving you Y of T. So, here we are going to get this X of T convolution of H1 of T, X of T convolution of H2 of T, both are added. And next is X of T, it is given to a block which has H1 T plus H2 T, okay. So, this is given here. So, output is this one. So, these both will be equal. Okay. So, this is the distributive property. So, now let us take the next property that is the associative property. So, associative property means, you know, A into B into C. If I take this inside, A into B into C, I will group this. Right. So, similarly, you can write X of T convolution of H1 T convolution H2 T that is equal to X of T convolution of H1 T convolution of H2 of T. Okay. So, now let us start with this RHS. So, what I will consider? This I will consider as Z of T. So, Y of T will be equal to Z of T convolution of H2 of T. So, what I can write? Y of T is equal to minus infinity to infinity Z tau H2 T minus tau D tau. And what we know? Z of T that is equal to X of T convolution of H1 of T. So, now I can write this in terms of tau. I am just replacing T by tau because for the simplification purpose because in the integral we already have Z tau. So, I will be writing this in terms of tau. Okay. H1 of tau. So, this will be equal to minus infinity to infinity X of eta H1 of tau minus eta D eta. Okay. You may uh, think like how we arrived at this expression. If it was in terms of T, I could have written this in the form X of tau H of T minus tau D tau. So, this T, this T was same. So, here this tau and this tau will be same. Here there will be some dummy variable. Um, uh, here it was tau. Here I am just replacing it by eta because already we have tau in the equation. So, this will be the Z of tau. Now, what I will do? I will substitute this in this place. So, y of t is equal to minus infinity to infinity as it is. Now, I will substitute z of tau. x of eta, h1 of tau minus eta and here we have d eta and h2 of t minus tau, t minus tau and here we have d tau. So, now what I will do is I will replace this tau minus eta by m. So, d tau will be equal to dm. So, limits uh, limits will be same because both have positive coefficients x of eta h1 of m. Then instead uh, this one d eta is same h2 t minus what is tau? It is m plus eta. So, it becomes m minus eta and this will be dm. Right. So, now what I can write this as H of T is equal to H1 of T convolution of H2 of T. Okay. So, now what I can write this as see H1 of M and uh, this I can write it as T minus eta minus M. So, this is T minus eta, right? So, I can write H of T minus eta that is equal to H1 of T minus eta convolution of H2 of T minus eta. So, this is nothing but H of T minus eta, okay? This is H, H of T minus eta because I can show it H of T. If it is H1 T convolution of H2 T, I can write this as minus infinity to infinity H1 of M H2 of T minus m dm okay but here i have considered h of t minus eta so i can replace this t by t minus eta so see this one t minus eta minus m h1 of m so h1 of m h2 of t minus eta minus m this is nothing but h of t minus eta this is a convolution right so this particular portion okay with this integral this becomes h of t minus eta so now we are left with minus infinity to infinity x of eta 
h of t minus eta d eta. So here once again it is of the form x of t convolution of h of t. Right. So here already we know h of t is h1 of t convolution of h2 of t. So we started with x of t convolution of h1 of t but now we arrived at this particular result. So we can say that this satisfies the associative property. Okay. Associative property is satisfied.